Hi, hello. Uh, I am starting a more or less articulated uh, exposition, or more or, a more or less articulated lecture on business models in the industry of renewable energies. This video is supposed to be the first one in the cycle, in the series, and uh, I am introducing progressively different uh, real business cases and I will try to give them like an overarching common denominator or a set of common denominators. Okay, let's dig into it. What you can see in this window is the front page of the annual report of a company uh, incorporated in the United States, uh, which is called First Solar Incorporated. Uh, in a moment, uh, I will return to that to that report, and uh, but, but let's say f to begin with, and right now I am addressing myself specifically to students, especially to first year or second year undergraduate students <coughs> who might not be quite familiar yet with like the basics of business research and basics of business intelligence. Uh, so for a moment, I will kick that report of First Solar out of the, uh, uh, of the window of this video. And I will show you how you can get those reports by yourself. So let me open the internet browser and let me include the window of the internet browser into the window of this video. Where is Chrome? Yes, Chrome is here. So here you have a view on the, on the window of the Internet browser, Google Chrome, and now I will demonstrate how you can find and retrieve those reports, uh, those an annual financial reports of different companies by yourself. Uh, what you do in the first place, uh, you type in the internet browser, it can be any internet browser, I just use Google Chrome because it is quite quick, you type the name of the company you are interested in. So you type, in this case, first solar. And then you type a special phrase, investor relations. First solar investor relations. I click on that. And I have the investor relations page of First Solar. Now, a general explanation. Every company uh, which is listed in any public stock market is uh, compelled to disclose publicly information, including financial information, about, let's say, the financial health of the business. It is supposed to inform investors whether the given business is a good investment or not. Uh, and this, in this case, so every company listed in any stock market has such a website, a website of investors' relations. So you type into the uh, internet browser the name of the company followed by the phrase investors' relations. And you just uh, ask Dr. Google to lead you to that specific site. Now, I am in the, or at the Investors Relations site of First Solar. And here you have financials. Okay, I hope you can see it in the window of the video. In the financials link, there is a sublink called SEC filings and another one called annual reports. Uh, let's click on the annual reports one just to show you how it works. 
uh, under the heading of annual reports, uh, you usually have uh, those sort of uh, fancy, colorful reports. Uh, which contain a lot of graphics, a lot of visuals. Okay, the internet connection is a little bit slow today. It is raining and I am using my phone to hotspot. Okay, so this is an annual report such as you can find under the heading of annual reports. I will close this one for a moment or I will pass or go back. This time Instead of going to the sublink uh, annual reports, I will go to the sublink called uh, SEC filings here. Uh, SEC is an acronym for Securities and Exchange Commission. And SEC filings are essentially the same reports that you can find under the heading of annual reports. They are just presented in a standardized form. You will see how standardized is it. So I choose annual filings and here is uh, annual report filing type 10K. I click on the Adobe Acrobat version, on the PDF version. And here you can see a different front page of the annual report, just to compare. This is the front page in the form 10K and that's the front page in like the fancy version. I usually, as, uh, at least for the companies who are listed in the American stock market, I prefer using those SEC forms, those SEC filings, because they have a standard a standardized structure, which is, at least for me, easier to browse through, uh, easier to find information in. Okay, uh, so this is the explanation how I retrieved that report of First Solar Incorporated, which I will use in this video as my business case to show you like the basics of defining a business model in general and uh, as the first case to show how those business models in the industry of renewable energies can be nailed down. Okay, so I close the window of the browser and I kick it out from the window of the video and I return to the annual report of First Solar, such as I showed it to you a few minutes ago. Okay, so here it is. I will just jump quickly over that top left corner. Actually, I don't know if from your point of view it is top left or top right. Okay, whatever. So here I am with that report of First Solar. Uh, you can read here it is annual report pursuant to Section 13 or 15D of the Securities Exchange Act of 1934 for the fiscal year ended December 31st, 2019. I go to the, to the table of contents. That's one of the reasons I prefer using those SEC filings as my readings and as my sources instead of those colorful annual reports. The SEC filings have a standard structure. Every time in the beginning you have the description of business. Here it is. You can see business. I click on it and I go to the description of the business. So, we read, we are a leading global provider of comprehensive PV solar energy solutions. Right now, an explanation, PV stands for photovoltaic. 
the photovoltaic technology is the technology of what we commonly call solar panels or solar modules. Those flat structures which, when exposed to sunlight, generate electricity. So we design, manufacture and sell photovoltaic solar modules with an advanced thin film semicon semiconductor technology and also develop and sell photovoltaic solar power systems that primarily use the modules we manufacture. Additionally, we provide operations and maintenance services to system owners. We have substantial ongoing research and development efforts focused on various technology innovations. We are the world's largest thin film photovoltaic solar module manufacturer and one of the world's largest photovoltaic solar module manufacturers. In that paragraph you can already see like sort of between the lines an important trait in that specific business model. Before I highlight that specific trait, a general remark. When you read those annual reports, uh, you need to be sort of careful for catching information between the lines. Those reports are technically the information or the kind of information which the company in question is compelled to publish about itself. Yet those reports are used also as tools for public relations, for if you, if you want for uh, financial marketing. If you have in a report 280 pages, as it is the case here, you can see the page counter here uh, at the top, you can use those 280 pages to insert and sort of sneak through some content which is more marketing than strictly speaking financial information. So, a general remark for the future, if you study those annual reports and if you follow my teaching, uh, you will work a lot with those reports. Uh, try to read between the lines, try to find interesting facts which are like not obvious. And here in that first paragraph, which I have just read aloud, there is an interesting, an interesting thing. Practically in every sentence uh, there, there is reference uh, to two things, to the scale of operations. For example, we are a leading global provider. We are the world's largest thin film photovoltaic solar module manufacturer. So here is the reference to size, to the scale of operations. And secondly, there is the reference to the, like the core mac, uh, to the core activity, and the core activity is here. We design, manufacture, and sell photovoltaic solar modules with an advanced thin film semi semiconductor technology. So here, you can see a business model focused on scale, so on size, and on the other hand, that business model is focused on manufacturing, on a specific technology and on manufacturing operations attached or connected to that specific technology. Uh, besides, we can read in the second paragraph of that presentation that in addressing the overall global demand for electricity, our high efficiency CDTE modules, which leverage our series six, series six module technology and power plant solutions compete favorably on an economic basis with the traditional forms of energy generation and provide low cost electricity to end users. Our diverse capabilities facilitate the sale of these solutions and the adoption of our technology in key markets around the world. We believe our strategies and points of differentiation provide the foundation for our leading industry position and enable us to remain one of the preferred providers of photovoltaic solar energy solutions. 
before I go to the next case, because I like to do like comparative studies, I will uh, try to put a general frame around what we have just read. Try to practice the following. It is important in understanding business models. Try to have a look at essentially any business you want. It can be a business in the industry of renewable energies or anything else. You can take a family business, which is like present in your life or around you. You can take a construction company. You can even have a closer look at a supermarket that is uh, in your close vicinity. And try to ask yourself the following question. What is like the core business of that business? What do they really make money on and out of? Try to just exercise your mind in that specific look or in that specific point of view at any business you see. By the way, you can use the same logic to study any organized social structure. You, you can have a look at your government or at our government, as a matter of fact. And you can ask yourself the same question. OK, those guys and those guys in those nice suits who claim to be our government, what is their core business? What, is, uh, what are the core competences and the core factors that they base their power on? OK? Try to think in those lines. So we return to our case studies. For a moment, I will respectfully kick out the first solar case or the first solar report out of our video window. And I will bring up another case of another company in the photovoltaic business, just different. This company is called uh, SMA Solar. It is based in Germany. I am bringing up to the video window their semi-annual report for, 2000, for the first half of 2020. Okay, I quickly jump over the top corner of that report. I pass to that report in my, on my own screen and we start reading. So here is that, uh, that report with its front page. By the way, I retrieved and downloaded that report in exactly the same way uh, which I uh, explained as for First Solar. It is exactly the same drill. You go into any internet browser you want, you type the name of the company, in this case SMA Solar Technology, and you type it back to back with the phrase investors or investor relations. And you have it. So here we have the table of contents. On the second page, we have basic information about the group, business activity and organization, research and development. Let's browse. So basic information about the group. Uh, by the way, here you, you can see a drawing. I will magnify it a little bit to make the drawing, uh, to make the graph more uh, visible for you. And you have a visual presentation of the structure, SMA group, home solutions segment, business solutions segment, large scale and projects solutions segment. So you can see that this specific company is like right from the start presents itself as a collection of different segments. It is important. We have those two big like business models in any industry. The very integrated one, uh, and in this case, the first solar incorporated case is a case of a highly integrated business or a, like a networked structure of different businesses in the same business organization. And SMA Solar is such a case. OK, let's read about them. SMA Solar Technology AG. Uh, AG stands for uh, uh, joint stock company uh, or Aktiongesellschaft, I think, uh, in German. 
and its subsidiaries. So SMA Solar Technology AG and its subsidiaries develop, produce and sell solar and battery inverters, monitoring systems for photovoltaic systems, medium voltage technology, transformers and chokes. In addition, the company offers intelligent energy management solutions and services, including operation and maintenance services for photovoltaic power plants. Another business segment is digital services for the future energy supply. Legal structure of the group. As the parent company of the SMA Group, SMA AG, headquartered in Nistetal near Kassel, Germany, provides all of the functions required for its operative business. The parent company holds, either directly or indirectly, 100% of the shares of all the operating companies that belong to the SMA Group. The annual report includes information regarding the parent company and all 28 group companies, including 7 domestic companies and 21 companies based abroad. In addition, SMA Solar Technology AG has a 28.27% stake in Tigo Energy Incorporated, and Tigo Energy Incorporated is recognized as an associate in the consolidated financial statements. The company was newly established in the year under review. The company was newly founded in 2019. It is a joint venture in the field of charging infrastructure facilities, in which the group holds a 33.34% stake. I will browse. into research and development to have a highlight at what they do in terms of like forward-looking strategies. So SMA uses its high systems expertise to develop holistic solutions for different photovoltaic applications and for comprehensive energy management across all segments and sectors. Power generators, household appliances, storage systems, heating, ventilation and air conditioning, e-mobility. To offer our customers technically mature and economic system solutions in all market segments and regions, we selectively collaborate with strong partners. With our continuous research and our market and customer focused development, we can further reduce the consumer cost of photovoltaic electricity and decrease the complexity in the new decentralized and digital energy world, thus making a significant contribution to a successful global energy transition. Cool. So you have seen or you have had a glimpse of two business cases or two business cases. First Solar Incorporated based in the United States and SMA Solar AG based in Germany. Right from the start you can see two different business models. Uh, so in the case in First Solar it is a business model focused very strongly on manufacturing, on big scale manufacturing and on an exclusively owned technology, possibly an innovative one. And in the case of First Solar, you have a business which is sort of dispersed or diversified between various technological specializations in like the one big industry of photovoltaic. Now I jump back to First Solar, uh, so I temporarily kick SMA report, no, I kicked myself accidentally from, uh, from the window, let me come back to that window quickly, yes, here I am, just let me make myself a little bit smaller, okay, and now Yes, I kick out of the video window the report by SMA temporarily and I return to the annual report by First Solar. Okay, we get there for First Solar. Okay. I quickly jump over the edge and here I go. Uh, 
Now I will jump to another section of that report to show you like the next step in my customary, in my habitual way of studying those annual reports. So first I have a look at the description of the business. I have like a general view. Before entering into details, I sort of go and check the cards. I check the cards of the business and the cards are here. Selected financial data. Mm -hmm. I go there. This is a section in those SEC uh, standardized reports. Uh, a section which presents like at, as a quick glance the financial stance of the company. So I have a first solar here and we have their financials. Uh, here you have a mention. Data in thousands except per share amounts. Uh, and a general remark as you read those reports, mostly when they are written in the Anglo-Saxon financial format. You remember that in that Anglo-Saxon financial format, the coma in numbers is a separator of orders of magnitude. So the coma separates thousands from millions, millions from billions, and so on. The decimal point is the point, strictly speaking. Here you have income per share and you have a decimal point, 1.09. Okay? So, we have those financials of the first solar. Uh, first of all, I focus on net sales and gross profit and operating income, just to explain those three basic categories to my students, because an understanding of those basic financial categories is something I find necessary to advance in business intelligence and research about business models. So net sales, it is the value of sales of the given company, net of any indirect taxes, like value added tax or excise tax. Then you have gross profit. The gross profit is something that is sometimes called the merchant margin. The gross profit is the difference between the net sales and the direct cost of manufacturing and supplying whatever the company is supplying. Uh, those direct costs are usually considered a sort of external. This is the cost of buying things and buying services from external suppliers. And here you have net sales in 2019, 3 billion, 63 millions, 117 thousands of dollars. These are the net sales of First Solar, or these were the net sales of First Solar in 2019. Gross profit, uh, 549 millions, 212 thousands of dollars. So they have some profit at the gross level. And then we come to the third category, operating loss or income. Uh, in a business, you essentially have two type of current, two, uh, excuse me, two types of current costs. You have the variable cost, the direct cost of whatever we make and supply, and we have something that we call the fixed indirect costs, like the salaries of office clerks, uh, the salaries of people who are in the management team, uh, the rent we pay per month for whatever facility we are renting. So after subtracting from the gross profit all those fixed indirect costs, we have the operating loss or income. And in the case of the first solar, sadly enough, it is a loss. We know that it is a loss because it is in parentheses or in round brackets. Uh, once again, in the financial notation, in this specific financial format, when you see a value in parentheses, it is a negative one. And they have an operating loss, or they had an operating loss in 2019, 
of 161 million seven hundred eighty five thousands of dollars so this is a quick glance at the financial situation at the financial stance of first solar now i will do the same check for uh, the case of sma solar i will check their sales and their profits just to compare scales of those two businesses and to compare their capacity to make money. So I respectfully kick out the report of First Solar out of our window of video and I go back to SMA Solar. It is here. I quickly jump over the top corner and we check the financial stance of SMA Solar. I believe that their financials are here. This is, uh, we remember that there is a difference between the reported period in those two cases. In the case of First Solar, it is an annual report for 2019. In the case of SMA Solar, it is a half annual report for the first half of 2020. Uh, and H1 2020 means the first half of 2020. And correspondingly, H1 2019 is first half of 2019. Let's see, what do they have? Sales, same as net sales, in millions of euros. And in the first half of 2020, it was 400, uh, excuse me, 514.2 millions of euros. Like, so like half a billion euro. Uh, roughly speaking, it would be like $600 million. So if we extrapolate it over the whole year, it would give a little bit more than $1 billion per year of net sales. We remember that in the case of First Solar, we have a business uh, which in 2019 had a revenue of $3 billion, of dollars, a little bit more than $3 billion. So in the case of uh, SMA Solar, we check the, uh, the first half of 2019 here. And in the first half of the last year, uh, SMA Solar had 362.7 millions of euro of revenue, which gives around half a billion euro of revenue of sales uh, over the whole year, extrapolated over the whole year. So roughly speaking, in the case of SMA Solar, we have a business which in terms of sales, of the volume of sales, is approximately three times smaller than first solar. And when we compare business cases and try to nail down business models, it is important to have a look at that scale factor. It is a sort of an established wisdom and established science in management and in microeconomics that relatively large businesses in a given market work slightly differently from relatively smaller businesses. Um, so scale and size is sort of married or coupled with a certain business structure and a business model. Okay, let's look at the profitability of SMA Solar. Here we have a category which is informative about it. I will magnify to show it to you. EBITDA. You remember that when I was talking about the first solar case, I used the category operational loss or income. So the profit or loss that the company has after all the operational costs, both the direct variable ones and the fixed indirect ones. EBITDA is similar. Uh, EBITDA means, or it is an acronym, which says earnings before interest and tax. 
plus depreciation and amortization. And depreciation and amortization is here uh, in the line above. To give you a quick commentary on that, in every business or in every technological business, we have certain resources which we call fixed assets, like building, machines, equipment, patents, everything that we can broadly call our technological base. The technological base ages over time, it loses value over time, and tax regulations in most countries allow a company to subtract from their income tax base a certain amount of money which corresponds to that loss of value in fixed assets. And this is depreciation and amortization. So you can see that depreciation and amortization in the case of first of SMA Solar was 21.3 millions of euro. And when summed up with operational profit, so when summed up into EBA TDA, it made 24 millions of euro. Now I do simple subtraction, just in order to extract uh, the to extract the, the operational profit from that hole. I subtract depreciation and amortization from the total EBA TDA. So I subtract 21.3 uh, millions of euro from 24 millions of euro and I land with 1.7 millions of euro. So there is a positive, yet a tiny margin of operational profit. So I sum up. We have those two businesses. One of those businesses is First Solar Incorporated. And the second business is SMA Solar. Two countries, so United States and Germany, two specializations manufacturing on the one hand and complex technological services on the other hand. And we have quite a similar financial stance. Uh, First Solar is losing a little bit of money on the operational basis and SMA Solar is earning a little bit of money on the operational basis, but it is not much of an operational profit. So the first a like big question that we will try to dig into in order to comprehend better those business models in the industry of renewable energies, how those businesses make money, how they can make profit, or how they come to the point where they don't make any profit. Okay, so here I have just announced the topic of the next video, of the next lesson or lecture, if you want. And that would be all in this video, so have fun with science. Bye-bye.